Christmas and welcome back to All About English. I'm Dennis Wilborn and this is my new segment called Read All About It. I'm excited to share with you my reading and explanation of Charles Dickens's classic tale A Christmas Carol. Since we are in that season right now, now I'm presenting this story in 26 parts, which is going to let us dive deeper into the themes and messages of the story. You can join me as we follow the journey of Ebenezer Scrooge and discover the true meaning of Christmas. Let's continue our adventure with part 3, chapter 1 of A Christmas Carol, Marley's Ghost. Marley's Ghost. Uh, it says part 2, but this is actually video number 3. So, we'll call this part 3. Okay, as always, we're going to jump in with vocabulary. A lot of the vocabulary in this is rather old and some of it's not used anymore. That doesn't mean that it's not usable. You may find a lot of these words in our newspaper articles that you read. You might find them in old stories that you read. So don't just throw it out like you'll never use it, especially if you are one of my advanced viewers. All right, the first word here is an adjective dismal dismal which means of very low quality ah uh, the team made a dismal attempt at winning the game a low quality attempt yes you may talk about the dismal experience that you have at work so this is not one of those words that's uh, unusable next one up replenish replenish you know to make something full again by replacing what has been used that's one of the things that Gatorade and all those other sports drinks talk about they talk about replenishing electrolytes so what would you like me to replenish for you would you like me to replenish your glass yes please i'd like another please can i have another especially if you're going to replenish my cup of coffee link in the description if you want to buy me a coffee all right comforter a comforter is a type of thick cover for a bed hmm what on earth are we talking about a bed now last time we saw uh scrooge he was in an office but well, let's see what happens he couldn't keep his shoul uh he couldn't keep warm even with the comforter on his shoulders yeah it's like a big thick thick blanket some people still call it a comforter some people call it a quilt or a blanket i like comforter Next one is intimation. Now there is a very good word. A noun it means the act of stating something or of making it known especially in an indirect way. Intimate or intimation. There was no intimation from our boss that the company was having financial problems. There was no intimate intimation from our boss. That's a Don't confuse this with intimidation. Intimation is stating something or of making it known, especially in an indirect way. So, you know, you you could also say to imply an implication. So, like if someone tells you something but they don't say it exactly so, they're intimating something. All right? So the boss here in this uh, sentence didn't intimate didn't make it known that the company was having financial problems whether specifically or indirectly ah the word humbug humbug almost everybody knows even if they don't know the story of christmas carol they know the word humbug because it was really made famous by this not many people use it these days unless they're talking about uh grumpy old mr scrooge who says bah humbug Now what humbug actually means is not just grumpiness. It means you're describing dishonest language or behavior that is intended to trick people. It's a noun. So when you hear the word humbug, it's not just a grumpy noise. It actually means dishonest language. You're talking about what someone else is saying or their behavior that's intended to trick people. I am so sick of all this political humbug. Me too. Absolutely sick and tired of it. Next one up. Veneration. I think this is our last word on the vocabulary. Veneration, a noun. The act 
of showing a lot of respect for somebody, something, especially somebody or something that is considered to be holy or very important. We often hear the word veneration if we're talking about anything religious、uh, or holy. So, how do people express their veneration? That's a good question. How do people express their veneration、um, with some of the traditions that you may have in your culture? Leave a, com- a comment down below. I'm always interested to hear more about other people's cultures. Okay, here we go. This is a continuation of chapter one Marley's Ghost. I should probably change the music. <laughs> nah, it's good. <clears throat> Christmas Carol, Chapter One, Marley's Ghost. The door of Scrooge's counting house was open, that he might keep his eye upon his clerk, who, in a dismal little cell beyond, a sort of tank, was copying letters. Scrooge had a very small fire, but the clerk's fire was so very much smaller that it looked like one coal. But he couldn't replenish it, for Scrooge kept the coal box in his own room. Wherefore the clerk put on his white comforter and tried to warm himself at the candle, in which effort, not being a man of a strong imagination, not being a man of a strong imagination, he failed. Yeah, he couldn't quite get the concept of warming his hand by the candle. Merry Christmas, Uncle! cried a cheerful voice. It was the voice of Scrooge's nephew, who came upon him so quickly that this was the first intimation Scrooge had of his approach. Bah! said Scrooge. Humbug! Christmas? A humbug? Uncle, you don't mean that. I am sure. I do. Out upon Merry Christmas! What's Christmas time to you but a time for paying bills without money? A time for finding yourself a year older and not an hour richer? If I had my will, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips would should be boiled in his own pudding. Uncle, nephew, keep Christmas. In your own way, and let me keep it in mine. Keep it, <laughs> but you don't keep it. Leave me, let me leave it alone. Then, much good it may do you. Much good it has ever done you. There are many things from which I might have derived good, but by which I have not profited. I dare say, Christmas. Among the rest, but I am sure I have always thought of Christmas time, when it has come around, apart from the veneration due to its sacred origin. If anything belonging to it can be apart from that, as a good time, a kind, forgiving, charitable, pleasant time. Don't be angry, Uncle. Come, dine with us tomorrow. Okay. There you go. How did Uncle Scrooge get such a great,、uh, great nephew inviting him to dinner? Remember yesterday, we heard about Scrooge. No, even the blind people's dogs avoided Uncle Scrooge, but not his nephew. He is kind and forgiving and charitable and pleasant, as the story says. So. So、uh, let's just cover some of these questions here.、Uh, why couldn't the clerk replenish the fire in his room? Yeah, it must have been chilly. Why couldn't he replenish that fire? Well, according to the story here, it's because he couldn't replenish it. For for is another way of saying because Scrooge kept the coal box in his own room. Oh, greedy old Scrooge! He's such. A tight-fisted man. Good. And how did the clerk try to keep himself warm? Well, if you remember my acting, which wasn't very good, he kept his hands over the candle to keep himself warm and had a big white c- 
comforter. That's the word, comforter. Very good. You remember. And who was it that came to see Scrooge? Hmm. That's right. His nephew. His nephew just came in unannounced. Nobody knew. Everybody was surprised. And how did Scrooge react to his nephew's greeting? Hmm. Bah! Humbug! Ah, what a great thing! Yeah, his nephew comes in screaming, "Happy Merry Christmas!" And Unc and Scrooge says, "Bah! Humbug!" And what is humbug again? Humbug is saying that something is not true. It's false. Yeah, let's go back up to that vocabulary. Humbug. It's dishonest language or behavior that is intended to trick people. So what is Scrooge saying? He's saying, "Merry Christmas" is dishonest. Merry Christmas is behavior intended to trick people. I don't know if he thinks his nephew is trying to trick him, but it sure sounds like it. And the last question on the list here: How did Scrooge's nephew describe Christmas? <laughs> Rather beautifully, actually. He says, "Whenever Christmas time has come around," he said, "apart from the veneration." Due to its sacred origin, that's the honor. Remember the honor that we're giving to the sacred, the holiday. Because what is Christmas if not sacred? It is, after all, Christ Mass. It's the birth of Jesus Christ. Therefore, it's very sacred. He says, if anything can be apart from that sacredness, he's thought of Christmas as a good time, a kind, forgiving, charitable, pleasant time. All right. So, why don't you leave a comment down below? Tell me how you would describe Christmas. What do you think of Christmas as, and what's the meaning? It's very interesting stuff. Okay, you can take a look at the language practice on your own, as the the link will be in the description down below for this article, and just just to wet your whistle on some of these discussion questions, start a discussion in the comments. Why? Do you think Scrooge is so grumpy? Bah, humbug. It's <laughs> a good question. Well, thank you for joining me today, this morning. Join me later this evening or this、uh, afternoon and watch part four, and come back tomorrow if you want to catch the rest. Thanks for joining me on this reading of A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. And if you want to continue the story, just click on the box right over there. I am always grateful for your support, so please remember to like and subscribe for more from All About English. Merry Christmas. <laughs>